Yes! Third video. Now, I do not know when I'm going to be doing a schedule with these videos. I'm not going to leave it like every three or four or five days. I might upload maybe every two days with these videos. And you're wondering, dude, it's been so long. What made you do it? Well, today, it's my birthday. I'm an older man now. I'm, I'm, I don't want to say how old I am. I, I'm an old man. Look, I'm old. I'm in my 50s. Let's make it like that. I'm in my 50s. I know I'm not young looking, but I, I'm, the last couple of years has been very hard on me. And every time when my birthday came around, I just felt very, didn't care upset even though I had a few people to talk to me about it saying happy birthday and stuff I just never really enjoyed it but this time around being another year older I thought you know what let me do what someone told me a long time ago it was like a two-part saying if you're sad help someone if you don't want to show compassion or kindness or joy to yourself give it to somebody else try to be kind to someone be joyous Give them a gift if you can't give yourself a gift, which could help you feel better, which in some cases it has. Over the last couple of years when I gave like um, someone some money like, hey, because of your daughter here, she's been so behaved, take this. I said, oh, thank you. Why are you doing it? Because, well, if you're not feeling happy and caring about yourself, give to others. That's what I've said. So that's what I'm doing here. This is my third video, and I'm giving to others a Gump Report Roundup. And this is the WWE. Let's make it clear. WWE has been doing a lot of work. We are very close to the year mark of when TKO Group Holdings was formed. Let me, let me crank this back. When Vince sold the company, Ari Emanuel decided that he wants to start a new parent company called TKO, TKO Group Holdings. And under that new company would be an umbrella of TKO UFC, TKO WWE, and I do believe um, the Endeavor is also under that umbrella. So it's a four company. You got one major company and three satellite companies. Or is it Discovery? I can't remember either Endeavor or Discovery is the third company that originally Ari Emanuel owned. I think it's just Discovery. But he now owns it. He owns three satellite companies under his major banner. And when you see how much has happened in nearly 10 to 11 months. Wow, uh, April, uh, July, August, September. In, in, in 10, 10 months. Almost a full year and 10 months. No, 10 months. Not a year and 10 months. 10 months since they formed it in September. I think September 13th of last year is when WWE sold the company. And about a week or two later, TK Coop Holdings was formed. We're coming close to it. Let us see what we got right now. And I'm not even talking about what the company's been doing lately. This is about two people that either is leaving, which is, and another one that potentially could come back. AJ Lee, let's make it clear. CM Punk, Philip Brooks' wife, April, is being questioned, could she come back and do another run? Now, many people have considered and they have talked about this for a while now, particularly that CM Punk has become has come back to to wrestling since he started AEW. Many people thought, well, AJ could end up on AEW. At one point, she was working Women of Wrestling on that promotion, which was a TV show, but it was also a promotion at the same time. And around the time when um, Tessa Blanchard was involved in it, there was some type of controversy. Tessa left. AJ, from what I understand, might have helped with one part of the season and then she was gone. Now, they're not talking about her being a part of it, I don't believe. But there's a possibility that maybe AJ may come back. What would that really do for the company? Oh, people loved AJ Lee. I'm sorry. Many people want to marry AJ Lee. AJ is a very beloved wrestler. That Let's make this clear. AJ compared to the Bellas, Nikki and Brie, let me make it very clear. She's better than them both. And I take nothing away from Nikki and Brie. They had their own niche as a team that of uh, pretty much of twins. 
The only difference between the two is one had a breast implant and the other one didn't. Because they both had the same pair of tits. They're both identical twins almost. And one got breast implants, the other one did not. One got pregnant before the other one. And one married Brian Danielson. The other one married, at least at one point, John Cena until, well, married. Yeah, I, I don't remember if they got married. I don't think they did. They came close to getting married and then stopped. But AJ, April, much more beloved than the Bellas. I'm sorry. She just was. I cared about AJ way more than I cared about Brie and Nikki. Even though Brie did expose her nipple at one time in the ring. Thoroughly in a dress. Nipple was showing. Look at Botchamania. I believe it's still there. But does this mean anything? Yes. If AJ comes back, it will give a very strong boost to the women's division. It will. Does that mean that she will be pushed? That's the biggest question because right now, Triple H, who is the current contents officer, I don't know if he will push her very far. He will use her to get other women over and he will push her to a certain extent. But will he push her? Well, will she be pushed the way she should be pushed? To really make the fans happy. I don't know. So as far as I'm concerned. There's a very strong possibility. She will not be pushed very far. But she would be pushed. And would be used to put over a lot of younger talent. Because that's what Triple H wants to do right now. He wants to push a lot of young talent. At least the ones that he cares about the most. Now. Let's talk about Beth Phoenix. The wife of Adam Copeland. I don't even remember where her name is. It's been so many years. I've only known her as Beth. It's been so many years. I forgot her real name. But Beth has been known for many, many years as one of the staples of WWE, the Divas Division, Women's Division. She has been, to a certain extent, I do believe compared to a bit to China because of how strong she is, how prominent she was. Unlike um, Laura, unfortunately, who lost her life. Beth has managed to stay with the WWE, unlike with Beth, well, not Beth, unlike with Laura, the China, who could not work with WWE anymore, could not use her actual name because, well, the, the work name, China, and really never got anywhere other than doing small parts. And I think she did a small part in a movie and she's done porn. And then she went to Japan to become a teacher and then she came back and unfortunately passed away. So, it has not been good for her before she passed. But as it stands right now, what does this mean for Beth Phoenix? A lot. Now, we don't know what Beth is going to do because after she has left, because her contract has expired, we don't know what she's doing. Is she just being with her daughters? Probably. No problem. If she wants to just be a, a home mom, stay there permanently, there's nothing wrong with that. She can be a mom. But if she still cares about wrestling, if she still has that wrestling itch, she last wrestled, I think, Royal Rumble 2023. If she still wants to wrestle, she has multiple places to go. She can go to AEW and work with Adam, who is currently out because he broke his ankle. I don't know, fractured his ankle. She can go back and she could appear there very soon. She could also go to TNA. Now, I know not everyone is going to be fond of her going to TNA. And with the questions of how TNA and this collaboration is going, I don't know if she would even want to go. She's not going to make the same money as she would in AEW, WWE. They just don't have the budget. Particularly that if they're not paying... Let me give it to you like this. The current CEO of Anthem, no matter what anyone says, you could tell that... Anthem is not investing a lot of money in TNA. They're just not. Yes, they got new sets, but it does not mean that they are able to do a lot. Yes, we got 4,000 seats, and I know someone's going to say 4,000 seats. I know, but we are still talking about the day-to-day operations of TNA, not about them doing a pay-per-view. Understand that. And anyone says Eurosport in India is a big deal that they managed to keep their their keep their streaming and connection there. They had that for many, many years. They have not lost it. Not since they acquired it when Muhammad Shira won the TNA Championship from Sanjay Duff. How many years was that? Uh, Easily many, many years ago. They have not lost that, 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 um, that deal they have with Eurosport. 
And Sony at one point, I believe they still have that connection to Sony in India through Eurosport. But literally, they have the same deals. None of the deals have expired and they lost them. None of them. They're still established and they're still giving constant money ex out outside the United States. But what you guys never want to hear. TNA wants the American market. No matter what you say, TNA wants the American market. And when it was Scott Demore running it, he tried his best to get the American market and tried to grow at least whatever he was allowed to grow in the company. But as they say, to make money, you must spend money. And there's got to be a reason why Scott Tamore was literally fired by the CEO of Anthem. There's no question of wrongdoing. There's been no one coming out saying that Scott Tamore was racist, sexist, or tried to use someone. Nothing. He just tried to buy the company, and then briefly after that, he was fired. So what does that mean? He tried to grow the company. The CEO said, no, you're not going the way I want. I'm not giving you more money. He's asked for more money. It was already speculated. He asked and rumored that he begged for more money. Constantly kept begging, and the CEO said, no. He managed to have at least enough money, enough money from the budget, because like I told you guys for years, the major amount of budget that TNA gets is from everything that was already arranged from the company itself. Remember, TNA, when it was Impact Wrestling, was a satellite company. It had its own budget, and it could only grow so much from what budget it had. Anthem, whether it was going through Anthem in through um, Access TV, there were Anthem paid Access. Well, pretty much Anthem told Access to pay T Impact Wrestling or TNA. A certain amount of money. Or they were getting it directly from Anthem. Which I do believe they were getting the money directly from Anthem. Not just Access TV. And Scott kept saying I need more money to grow the damn company. Give me more money. And he said no. And that is why Scott again from what I understand. He tried years ago to buy the company before Dixie Carter's family took it. He tried to buy it. He couldn't get it done then. Again, he went to a reputable bank, as I said, I believe in the AEW review or the, um, or WWE review. No, AEW review. I said this. But essentially speaking, he tried to buy the company for a reputable bank. And he tried to give them a real, honest, lucrative offer. And they refused. So in this respect, I am saying right now that... When you look at it for, and going back to Beth Phoenix, if Beth goes to TNA, she's not going to get the same money. She just isn't. But she could go there temporarily until there's some room in AEW to be able to bring her in. That's what I thought. Uh, when you look at Trinity, I truly believe Trinity is not being treated well in TKO WWE. I believe that just using her to get other people over, flat out, she's really not going to get anywhere. She'll be in some profile spots, but it will never be about her. She's not going to get the title. She's not going to get the tag titles. I could be wrong, and I'm fine if I'm wrong. But here, when you look at Trin, I truly believe she should have stayed with TNA for a little longer, then go over to AEW, work there for a while, for another year, before all this happens. When it comes to the year rolling around in WWE, going back to WWE, because we, like I said, for the last year since the merger and the formation of TKO Group Holdings, I truly wish she had not come back so soon. The company is still very new. It's not even more than a year old. It's 10, it's 10 months old. And I truly believe that it would have been better if she stayed out of WWE. But now we got Beth, who has left WWE, who can go to TNA for a short stint and then go to AEW after that. People would love her there. Does it mean that she'll be getting over? Well, it's going to count on Joan Pepperman. Because she's now the one who's directly responsible for the women as far as we can see. We got three storylines that we were able to see. And that was one. We got Mariah May and Texas Tony Storm. My Tony Storm. We got, well, 
Do I believe Mercedes Monet is doing well with Britt Baker? Yes. Does he need more development? Yes. And then you got Chris Statlander and a Willow Nightingale who just became the Duranus Duranus champion, I believe. No, no, not Duranus Duranus. The CMLL champion. I think, yeah, she's a CMLL champion because they are working with CMLL. And she's now their champion. And now there's supposed to be a match, I believe, next week so Chris Statlander can try and get the CMLL championship from her. So we got three feuds going on at the same time that we were able to see on Dynamite and some bits on, on Collision, which is good. I would like to see at least one more storyline that would at least give women more opportunity. They may not all get the same length of matches. Like you can do a 15-minute match with one woman. In some cases, you get five minutes and five minutes and maybe two minutes another one. But if you can use the story in the background, show them in the back fighting or talking or something, you can compensate for not having enough time to do the matches. You can do fights in the match. You can do segments in the match. You can do some type of special thing. Like, when I say this, I'm still angry. You got a real-life couple in AEW, in a, a, um, let me give it to you like this. When you look at Parker and you look at Ruby Soho, they're an actual couple and they're having a baby. And this storyline between them, actually having a real life storyline, dealing with Saray and her brother, and, and um, Cameron, um, what was it? Cameron Harris, I forgot her name already, damn it. Harris, I believe Harley or Harris, I can't remember her name right now, I'm blanking. It was a whole year storyline that was on Rampage that we didn't see. And we should have saw it either on Collision or on Dynamite. They could have had that story for a year. Instead of letting Ruby Soho tell her man in the middle of the ring in real life that she's pregnant with his kid. And we could have had that specialness on Dynamite or on Collision. No, we got it on Rampage. But this is just me. And this is the last of the three videos. Please give me a comment below. I think I'll be releasing this somewhere like maybe Tuesday maybe or Wednesday. I don't know yet. Peace.